Hi, beautiful people. How are you? I hope you're having a great day. With you, I can be sad with you. Just take my hand and fly up through the dreams where the skies are so clear. Tesla decided to chase the neighbor, I'm assuming, on her lawnmower while I was working on all of this stuff and didn't realize he was out there running. So he needed to cool off and came inside. Tessa has been out chasing the neighbor on her lawnmower. <laughs> I mean, if she came anywhere near him, he'd run. But he thinks he's pretty awesome by running along the fence line as she's mowing on the other side. But he gets overheated. So this is what he does. Comes inside, my little smarty pants, and stands over the air conditioning and lets it blow on him to get him cooled off. Don't you, baby? Huh? Don't you? He's a good boy. He just couldn't help himself, I guess. Before the shelf almost fell onto my head, last week. I managed to organize three kitchen cabinets and they seem to be staying that way. I also cleaned out my refrigerator. That's something I have to stay on top of. My husband started working on the shelves for the utility room and then he ran out of long screws. He picked up more yesterday Today is Tuesday, before he came home from work, but his plans got detoured by me. Does anyone else get extremely frustrated by websites that have you call a phone number when you can't get logged in? And then you keep going in these big circles and never get to talk to anyone? That's when my impatience shows up. And I start to shut down. That happened yesterday. My husband came in here and helped me. It was a whole thing. That's not proper grammar, but you get my gist. I got a letter from an auditing company about my personal information on their server from our bank. And now I need to set up a monitoring service to make sure my personal information doesn't get out there on the World Wide Web. So far, they say they don't see any sign of it, but I'm going to sign up for that monitoring service just to make sure. It's always something, right? Which leads me to another topic, Christians. If you're a Christian... Like me, you'll understand. If not, I hope this is encouraging. Christians are humans. They're people like all of us. They've been broken and hurt, and they're putting their lives back together just like everyone else. They're not perfect. Nobody's perfect, and they're not ever going to be perfect but they strive to have compassion because that's what Jesus would do. When my friends years and years ago, who were Christians, didn't come to my defense when I needed them, I was hurt, but I forgave them because Christians are humans. So I kept my eyes on Jesus and I got through it. And I'm a better person for doing that. Not better than them, by any means. Better than I was. But let's all remember that in this world, we'll have trials and tribulations that make life difficult. But if we just keep our eyes on him, we'll get through it.
interstitial cystitis, or IC, according to Mayo Clinic, is a chronic condition that causes bladder pressure, bladder pain, and sometimes pelvic pain. You might have mild discomfort to severe pain. This condition is a disease also known as painful bladder syndrome. The bladder can become irritated and inflamed. This is a chronic inflammation of the lining of the bladder that often leads to that pelvic pain and pressure, as well as urinary frequency and urgency. The first time I heard of this condition was when I was working on my dissertation and studying fibromyalgia. I thought, oh my goodness, one more illness to add to the array of conditions that can overlap with fibromyalgia. Most people with interstitial cystitis are women with about 17% who are men. It can have a long lasting impact on quality of life with quality of life worse than those suffering from chronic kidney disease who are on renal replacement therapy. There's no cure, but medications and other therapies may offer relief. So today, I'd like to talk about this little known condition, or maybe it's widely known to you. Here we go. The symptoms, just like fibromyalgia, can vary over time, but you may have periodic flaring. Flares can occur in response to triggers like sitting too long, menstruation, stress, exercise, or sexual activity. Or you may experience symptom-free periods of time. About 80% of people with fibromyalgia also experience some type of bladder dysfunction. Quote from Alanda. I've linked that below. First, the pain and fatigue associated with fibromyalgia can make it difficult to get to the bathroom in time. Additionally, the condition can cause changes in the muscles and nerves that control the bladder, which can lead to issues like incontinence or overactive bladder. Finally, fibromyalgia can also cause irritable bowel syndrome or IBS which is a condition that often leads to bladder problems as well, unquote. These are the common symptoms according to Mayo Clinic. The symptoms may resemble those of a chronic urinary tract infection, but there's usually no infection. If a urinary tract infection is involved, the symptoms of interstitial cystitis might become worse. I have mentioned before that one of my favorite researchers is Muhammad B. Yunus. His research, including this one in 2011, and many others prior to and after this date, in my opinion, brought fibromyalgia to the forefront and showed that there are so many overlapping conditions that exist with fibromyalgia, including interstitial cystitis. 12 to 22.4% of fibromyalgia patients have IC. In the general population, it is estimated that IC is prevalent in 2.5 to 6.5%. So it's a common condition and not rare, and it's three to six times more common in fibromyalgia patients. Over 20% of IC patients had multiple overlapping conditions, according to a study by Nickel and Associates. 
Dr. Daniel Claw, a researcher and supporter of fibromyalgia patients, also recognizes the overlapping conditions in fibro like IC. Research shows that the sympathetic nervous system is a key element of the stress response. Sympathetic dysfunction has been reported in these diseases. Dysautonomia can also be present. To make matters worse, one study showed that over 24% of patients with IC also have irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, and 1.5% have IC and chronic fatigue while over 20% had multiple associated conditions with their IC. Quote, as the number of associated conditions increased, i.e. localized, regional, and systemic, pain, stress, depression, and sleep disturbance increased, while social support, sexual functioning, and quality of life deteriorated. Unquote. The exact cause is not known, but genetic and immune disorders, recurrent bacterial infections, and pelvic floor dysfunction are possible factors that can lead to this condition. Fibromyalgia may develop prior to IC, and other times IC may develop and then fibro. Most people with IC find that certain foods make symptoms worse, such as tomatoes, citrus fruits, chocolate, coffee, potassium-rich foods, alcoholic beverages, caffeinated beverages, spicy foods, and some carbonated beverages. Tesla just got a bath. Yeah. See, I'm feeling better. Gotta smell better, too. Oh, better. <laughs> he just loves to run back and forth on the deck. Starting to get tired. Who needs a bunny when you have Peter Cottontail right there? Like fibromyalgia, diagnosis can be difficult, so doctors will often rule out other conditions first. A urinalysis to look for certain chemicals and cells is performed to check for too much protein and checking red and white blood cells and looking for bacteria, viruses, and infections. A cystoscopy is performed to check for structural changes in the bladder or blockages, and often a biopsy of the bladder wall is performed to check for abnormal cells. A hydrodistension may also be performed where the bladder is filled with water so the doctor can view your bladder walls for possible hemorrhages, which are common in people with IC. A video, urodynamics may be performed to show how much urine it takes for you to feel the need to urinate. In men, the prostate is checked. There's a link between chronic infections and IC but can also play a role in fibro and ME-CFS. The pain in IC is believed to originate in the nerves and can lead to central sensitization as in fibro and ME-CFS. So much more is known about central sensitization than before, but peripheral factors and low-grade inflammation plays a part even though these are not identifiable on regular blood or urine tests. And since mostly women with IC, hormonal and anatomical differences may be at work as well.
There is no known cure for IC. The purpose of treatment is to ease symptoms and help you manage the disease. Bladder training and medicine are often used. Physical therapy and biofeedback relieve muscle spasms. A TENS unit is used where electric pulses enter the body for minutes to hours, two or more times a day to help relieve symptoms. In severe cases, the bladder is removed. Mm, that sounds horrible if other treatments don't work. Sometimes diet changes are needed, reducing stress, exercising, which is difficult with fibro, and stopping smoking is needed. Antibiotics are not helpful. In a Scandinavian study, they used urotherapist to help patients adopt lifestyle changes. I'm not sure if we have those in the U.S. They're specialist nurses who provide a supportive environment and make recommendations such as exercise and dietary modifications, including those foods that I mentioned, like caffeine and spicy foods. I'm thinking in the U.S., it may be suggestions by the urologist nurse or the doctor. The involvement of the patient's partner and family can also be helpful during consultation. Research shows that this can help sufferers deal with the disease. It's no different with fibromyalgia. We need family support, but social support is also needed. And why I hope this channel and the beautiful people who support it, my subs, are crucial as well to our healing. We cope better when we're heard. In one study on fibromyalgia and family support, 66% of patients stated that their family understood, helped, and supported them in their fight against the disease. However, 45% of patients said their partner or children didn't understand the disease, and my heart breaks for you. On top of that, 23% stated a low level of satisfaction with their family life. Even though I have fibro and my husband is wonderful, it's not perfect. He forgets sometimes that I may not be able to do some things. I gently remind him. He's good with that, and if I choose to proceed to do something, I remind him that I'll be slow. I mean, he's human too. 59% of patients reported many difficulties in their relationship with their partner. In another study, half of the patients with fibro were affected by their relationship with their partner in a mild to moderate way. It took my husband a bit of time to realize that I wasn't the same and wasn't going to be. The presence of a mood disorder like depression or anxiety, and I have generalized anxiety disorder, and a higher degree of fibromyalgia severity was the observation of their satisfaction in their relationships, according to that study. The rapid firing of pain neurotransmitters can affect our mood, but it isn't just that. Our burden to get things done, like housework, go to our job, and take care of our family, is real. We need help with reducing that burden, but to do that, we need the support of our family there should be an integrated therapeutic program to help people with fibromyalgia. And I think that's what most doctors aim to do, to provide you with the resources to get the help we need. I mean, we can help you clean your house, go to your job, or take care of your family, but we can be supportive and love you. And sometimes that's all that we need. 
to be loved. Our symptoms can be worsened by stress, that rapid firing of neurotransmitters can cause havoc on our emotions, not just our pain. When my puppy, Goldie, passed away, it sent me into a flare. But honestly, it started before that. Taking care of a sick puppy, a family member, was stressful. I worried that I wasn't doing all I could do for her. I worried that she wouldn't get better. That caused me to worry about relationships and I saw things that I didn't like and I became resentful. I'm human. But forgiving was crucial to my healing Forgiving helped me, and that's what it's all about. And hopefully, it will help those relationships as well, because I will react and participate and have more of a positive attitude when I'm around those people. So let's move forward with grace and mercy and love. To neglect our mental health leads to all sorts of problems, including our family and relationships. So I hope this is encouraging to you that we need one another because sometimes we get down and need time to work through things. So we're here for you. I hope you learned something. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. With you, I can be sad with you. Just take my 12 to 24 percent. 12 to 24. No. 12 to 22, 4. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> half of the opinion. Love me today, let's run up.